Fakama Asio. Today I'm gonna to be looking at the brand that is relatively new to me. I only discovered this year thanks to my friends on Facebook uh, who strongly suggested that I check the brand. So the brand I'm talking about is called Pierre de Velay and then the story goes that Roger actually found a book titled Pierre de Velay in South France in the market. The book contains some uh, interesting and complex uh, fragrance formulas so he decided to do an interpretation. So the fragrance that we're gonna be talking about is called Pierre de Velay 1. So it comes in this standard black box here you have P de V, Pierre de Velay and at the top you have uh, the number of the fragrance number one and then at the bottom you have Parfum and then in the back you have Made in England and then inside that box you actually have a Killian like uh, coffin or coffret a beautiful black finish here with gold uh, printing there so you have P de V, Pierre de Velay and at the top uh, they leave out the number here uh, because the rest of the fragrances uh, in the line use the same coffin there. This is actually magnetic um, so it takes a little bit of resistance there opening it and then inside there you have Pierre de Velay and then um, this is the presentation of the bottle uh, beautiful art deco like uh, presentation here so overall great presentation um, I think they did a great job with the presentation and it doesn't surprise me coming from a a Roja like brand. So what do I get out of Pierre de Velay number one? Um, this is a stunning fragrance. Uh, you can easily detect the Roja touch here. Now what I get out of the fragrance, I get three different layers and a beautiful envelope. As it progresses, the three layers that I get are pretty much the first layer. I get a beautiful soft age refined saffron and a rose note along with the oud that is non-barnyard tucked in the background. Now the saffron is going to be the star player in the opening, the rose is a little bit underneath that and then the oud uh, even more so uh, below in the background. And as it progresses I get the second layer that is made of a refined patchouli along with creamy sandalwood. The pairing between the patchouli and then the sandwood here reminded me of the pairing or the accord in Richwood uh, by Zerjoff. Just the pairing or that accord here, the patchouli sandwood, reminded me of what I got in Richwood. They're not the same scent, I'm just talking about the accord. Uh, reminded me of what I get here um, in the second layer being the refined patchouli and the sandwood. The patchouli here is not your wet earthy type, it is more so a patchouli that has a texture of uh, dry sand dunes here. Paired with the creamy sandalwood here is just amazing. And then you pair the patchouli along with the top or the first layer that I got with the saffron. It just adds this slightly dark facet to the saffron rose and then uh, the oud that is stuck in the background on the first layer. As it progresses in the dry down, I get a beautiful third layer that is pretty much made of benzoin and some soft creamy floral core that are not distinct. I just get a creamy soft floral core. Those are the three layers that I get and then the envelope that I referred to in the opening is actually a beautiful amber green note that adds a slightly naughty warm and sensual feel to the fragrance. So from opening until the dry down you're gonna get uh, the ambergris accor and in the dry down you're gonna get uh, the ambergris accor is gonna be paired with an addition of uh, a little bit of labdanum and some leather adding again reinforcing that slightly naughty sensual and warm feel. So that's pretty much what I get out of the fragrance. So top layer is going to be saffron, rose, oud. Second layer is going to be beautiful, refined, uh, dry, uh, dune-like patchouli core along with creamy sandalwood. Third layer, I get a beautiful, creamy, floral core with some benzoin. And over, over all that, I get a sensual, warm, slightly naughty, ambergris core that is there throughout the wearing of the fragrance and further reinforced with a little bit of labdanum and leather in the dry down, still maintaining or reinforcing that sensual, slightly naughty facet to the fragrance. Beautiful presentation, beautiful scent here. Um, I've not smelled anything like this fragrance before, but if you're familiar with the Roja fragrances, uh, this is gonna 
in part sound familiar because of his signature touch that he has to his origin line you're definitely going to see the crossover here you're going to see that touch here so if you like roger fragrances definitely give this one a try i think it is worth it i know uh the main player here is saffron along with the rose and then the oud and then the other layers are kind of supporting but what makes this one unique for me is the addition of that central warm and slightly naughty ambergris accord here that is uh, uh, maintained throughout the wearing of the fragrance and then the dry down being even further reinforced with that slightly labdanum and leather like a core. I think that's what makes this one stand out. So this is definitely worth a try. Now for performance, um, this is amazing. It lasts a long time on skin, 12 plus hours. Uh, projection is moderate, uh, sillage as well as moderate, but overall the performance is amazing on this one. If you spray on your undershirt, uh, it will last even longer. So I'm pretty pleased with the performance here. Now in terms of seasonality, actually I'll, I'm wearing this during summer and it's not cloying at all. Like I said, the elements here or the layers that are described are so refined. Uh, they're not too light but not too heavy, but they're rich in texture. So it is not cloying at all, even uh, when I was testing in it during uh, summer and with the performance I can definitely see myself wearing this one during winter as well in terms of situation I can see myself wearing it anywhere uh, but I would recommend that you wear this one dressed up because of how sensual warm and slightly naughty it comes off as I think if you dress up really well or smart casual this will enhance that image casually I'm not sure if it's going to complement it, but I think you can wear it pretty much in any type of scenario, but well suited if you are going to a formal event or actually uh, well dressed up. Now, in terms of gender, I think this is unisex. Uh, if you like the accords that I mentioned here, I don't see why you can't rock this. So I think this is unisex, definitely unisex for me. My girlfriend though thought it was leaning more masculine. Uh, she doesn't see herself wearing that because of the slightly dirty ambergris accord. So you have to keep that in mind. So onto rating, taking into account the price point, which retails at 495 pounds, at least that's what I was able to get it at. Available at the Roja store in uh, Harrods. I was actually fortunate enough for somebody to get it at Harrods and send it to me. Uh, taking into account the scent profile, that pricing, the performance, and then the presentation overall, I will give this a solid 9 out of 10. So a strong suggestion here to actually sample this one if you can. Uh, I think the price is a little high, but again, uh, Roja positions his product as a luxury item, so uh, hence the, the, the price range here. But overall, uh, despite the, the high price tag here, I think this is a solid offering. Uh, word sampling in my opinion. So if you've tried anything from the house of Pierre Bavillet, let me know which one is your favorite. I'm going to be touching on three other fragrances from this house. Again, thank you for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe, and take care.